So this is a tutorial on how to add RetroArch to your PlayStation 1 Classic. Now if you haven't followed the first tutorial, I really urge you guys to go check that out first. It'll get you up to speed with this actual part of the tutorial. Without it, it's kind of confusing. But anyway, go and check out that first part now. And if you have already, let's get on with adding RetroArch to our PlayStation 1 Classic. So let's go ahead and download our first zip file. So we need to go to modmyclassic.com and download the boot menu bundle. Uh, once you've done that, we can go over and we can unzip it into the actual root of your SD card. So just here, as I'm showing you now, once that's all unzipped, you can delete the original zip file. And we can move on to the next part. So once that's extracted into your SD card, then we need to go back over to the website, go to PSX download and the cores. We need to go onto here and we can see a whole bunch of cores that are available. So cores are basically just the actual system. So a PlayStation 1 core, a N64 core, Super Nintendo core, and so on. There's a bunch of different ones. There's even ones for arcade machines as well. We've got the main core. That's quite interesting. I'll show you some footage of that running later on in the video. But here we have a SNES core, and I'm going to be giving you the example of how to set this up with this just now. So once we've got our SNES core, we need to go back into our SD card. We need to find the actual RetroArch folder. So head into RetroArch and then go into config just here. And go into RetroArch folder just here. And then go down to cores. And as you see, we've also already got MuPin64 and PCSX. Uh, so I've just transferred the SNES card just here. And you can do exactly the same with whichever car you want to try. So ROMs, you just transfer them again into the root of the SD card. So just here, we, among all these other folders, you can transfer all your ROMs into here. Again, I'm not going to show you where you find your ROMs from. But just an example, I've got Tony Hawk in there just now. And then I can transfer whatever I want just into this, into this root of the SD card. So like before, just insert your SD card into the PlayStation 1 Classic, turn on the power. Now you'll be presented with an actual menu, you can go into RetroArch or BleemSync, obviously choose the RetroArch menu, so click into here, and then it will load up RetroArch. So to load a game, go to Load Core, just as shown, choose the car. so I'm going to choose the SNES car. I want to play the SNES game on, so load that car up. Let's go down to Load Content, click on there, click Start Directory and click here and let's go down to media so find media just here click into here and then let's go down and find our game which is just super mario world dot zip go down to load archive and then press x again and it should load up your game now to exit a game on your playstation 1 controller just click start and select at the same time and you will be presented with this menu click close content and you'll go back to retroarch as shown just here now to quit RetroArch, just go down to quit RetroArch on the end of the main menu. And what will happen is the PlayStation will actually turn off. This is the only way to do it. The actual on and off button will not work on your PlayStation Classic. This is the only way to quit RetroArch. And if you want to reload it, just push power on your PlayStation Classic. To disable that FPS counter, just go over to the COG menu, go down to on-screen display as shown just here, go to, down to on-screen notifications, and just go down to display frame rate, and then we can click the off or on, whichever we want to have it at. So I'm going to quickly show you how to adjust your controller settings. Now remember our PlayStation 1 Classic controllers have a limited number of buttons basically that don't, ha don't have the joysticks unfortunately. I wish Sony would have included those in this, but there we go. So I'm gonna load up an N64 game. This is actually Lyle It Was, also known as Star Fox 64, if you're in the US maybe. And the reason I'm gonna be doing this is because the N64 has that joystick and we're not gonna be able to actually play properly on some of these games because of that limitation with the actual joystick setup, etc. So press start and select like I showed you before to actually access this menu. And then come out of that, press circle, come out of that, and then we'll go over to the cog menu and go down to input. And then we go down again, keep going down, and then find input user one binds. And go into there and then go down again and find the d-pad setup so here is the d-pad setup just here use one up d-pad press x on there 
and select up, down, left, right to actually configure your D-pad like I've shown you. Come back out of there using the circle and go back to resume and everything should be working with your up, down, left, right D-pad. You want to go down to configuration file then down to save current configuration. This will just save all your settings that you've made. So thanks for watching. I really hoped you enjoyed this video and you followed it along nice and closely and got the most out of it. I really hope as well this has improved your experience with your PlayStation 1 Classic. This is really safe to do as well. Remember, we're only dual booting the system. We're not actually doing anything or messing around with the internal installation for the PlayStation 1 Classic. And in my experience, it's really, really safe to do it this way. We've showed loads of different tutorials of dual booting, maybe Libra Rec for these TV boxes or some other system. And I've never had a problem with it. I've never had a dual boot system damage anything, purely because the hardware is running off an external device. And that's pretty much it. There's no real chance of it affecting the internal install of this piece of hardware. So brilliant, brilliant job to the guys behind this. And they've actually notified me there is an update coming very soon, Bleem Sync 1.0. And yeah, I'm expecting a lot of different improvements, a lot of updates. Because although RetroArch works, there's a few glitches here and there. And yeah, but still, it still shows us really what this hardware can do. And there's a really bright future I think for the PlayStation 1 Classic. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. We shall see you very soon.